So, I agree with many of you that while this trailer at first glance seems quite funny, it also seems quite shallow, especially if you're familiar with the comic book storylines that it's based on, because significant changes seem to have been made to both of them. We don't see any evidence of the Jane Foster cancer storyline, which is crucial to that character in the comics. And then also, Gore just seems like Christian Bale in, uh, you know, in white paint. You know, it seems they've taken a lot of the, the majesty and the depth and the drama and the gravitas out of that storyline as well. But with a closer look, which we're about to take, I think this movie might actually be very deep after all. Because remember, while Taika Waititi is quite silly, he's also an Oscar winner. He knows what he's doing. And let me explain on these two points before we break down the trailer shot by shot. I'm about to blow your mind. All right, so first off, Thor is the first MCU character to go beyond a trilogy, to have a fourth film, not only because it took two movies until they got it, got it right, they got the formula right for the character, but unlike Iron Man, Black Widow, Captain America, etc., some of Thor's best stories are being told right now. That's exciting, right? Thanks largely to Jason Aaron, although I think Donny Cates writes the current comic. Um, very good. Thor has been a good comic for a while now. And both Thor and Loki, the Loki uh, Disney Plus show, are benefiting from those storylines. Loki gets a big assist from Kieran Gillen, just to make sure I give everybody credit. Uh, now, with um, so Jason Aaron, though, is responsible for Gore the God Butcher and then the Mighty Thor storylines, which were separate and they were expansive. So it seems weird to combine the two. But here's where I think the cancer might come in. Is Taika Waititi going to reveal that cancer is the real God Killer, the real God Butcher? I like that. I think that's very dramatic. I think that's very effective because here's the thing. We all know that, and this is interesting, we all know if you've read the comics that Jane Foster is suffering from cancer. And in the comic, her identity wasn't known uh, to even fans for a while, uh, you know, because you know, the way comics are drawn, you, you can't tell who's under the mask because, you know, they don't draw a specific face. You're not like, hey, that's Natalie Portman. But anyway, first it was a surprise even to readers who Jane Foster, who Mighty Thor's identity was, that it was Jane Foster, and then we learned that she had cancer, which nobody else knew. So while everybody knows who she is right away here, that it's Jane Foster, maybe they don't find out until the end of the movie that she has cancer, that Thor thinks they've got a second chance, and in fact, she's actually quite sick. I think that's incredible. I think that would be a very good idea, although I question how effective it would be when I would say 80 to 8, maybe even 90% of the people seeing the movie know Jane Foster's situation going in. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe they should have made it a, I think, yeah, surprise Thor by all means. But I, I mean, maybe they will. Maybe I think the readers should be in on that twist from the beginning, or at least from the first act, because everybody knows it. It's like, it's like, surprise, guess who Batman is? It's Bruce Wayne. And you're expecting the audience to be like, no freaking way. <laughs> well, of course, Bruce Wayne's in this very movie. We'll be talking about him. Um, oh, yes. So well, let's talk about him right now. But first, this conversation starts with the poster. Lovely poster. It's gorgeous. It has It's 80s fantasy, be it from the animation series of the time to the, po to the covers of rock albums, right? It's gorgeous. I think the She-Ra pose is hilarious. They have Valkyrie doing there, as I pointed out in my trailer um, reaction. But I also think Mjolnir looks just gorgeous here. It looks like the night sky, the space sky itself, with, you know, glistening with stars. And I think that's just a really great touch. I think that's great. But something I noticed while I was doing my notes for this breakdown is that Gore himself is not only black and white, but so is his world. Stripped of color. It's like Wizard of Oz, or even better yet, uh, Pleasantville. Isn't that a good choice, right? Like, because Gore doesn't believe in something bigger than himself. I guess that's what it is, be it a god or love or other people or, any, or, or just something bigger than you. He is very analytical, and there is no color in his life. I think that's really well done. I think that's very interesting commentary. Because again, as I said, even when they're in Gore's world, it's black and white, except for the gods, and in particular when the gods use their powers. That's really cool. I think that, I can't wait to see those sequences as a whole. Uh, and also there's that one jarring moment in the trailer, I think his origin, 
where he, you know he starts on this path and you can see how how different he looks in this these world this world of color. So I, I mean, I'm telling you, I think there might be more here than uh, than it seems at first glance. So I'm excited for Taika Waititi to walk us through this in the actual movie. But for now, let me walk you through the trailer. All right, so we start off with that gorgeous tree where Thor's looking inward. He's trying to think of something bigger than himself too. And I wonder if they're going to do an Avatar joke with these uh, blue people, these blue aliens. But Taika Waititi here, of course, uh, it's, it's Taika Waititi via motion capture, is telling a story. He says, grab your popcorn. And I, he has a really nice intro here. See, it's those same people, and you can see them in the background there. Oh, look, there's teenage uh, Groot in this, uh, uh, over there in the corner. And I like the description of Thor as a space Viking. I think that's what Marvel's landed on for the character. They started off with just, with just a Viking, and uh, it didn't work out. They were like, you know, we can't out Game of Thrones. Game. Even Game of Thrones couldn't keep it going. But I think Space Vikings pretty unique. You know, they can they can set their own, they can chart their own course with that ver with that depiction of the character. And look at those visual effects with the lightning coming down. Ah, Storm, you better get in here uh, and you know light up next to him because it's he's really you know I've, the character has rarely used lightning this much. Maybe in the comics today. But uh, he really, they're really emphasizing the god of the god of thunder. So I love that. Uh, <laughs> I love that he pops his collar. Ah, uh, I love a good popped collar. It's also a very funny, like '80s reference. It's a funny joke. Sometimes people who wear pop collars are considered uh, douchey, but I know I think it's a fine line. Some pop collars really are cool. So don't judge a pop collar, you know, until you see who's popping it. So there's new Asgard. I love that it has a golf course. And so this is just a different angle. We've seen before the cruise ships, you know, it's obviously doing quite well. That's the Asgardian tours, tour boat. So look, he changes clothes here. I love it. Uh, that's so funny. Also like He-Man, strong He-Man references. Uh, in, I mean, which is, I think, a good take for, and he certainly, Chris Hemsworth has gotten himself to be He-Man size. Uh, so he changes into an outfit that I think has some resemblance to the outfit he was wearing, which I think is a nice touch. And there he's got Stormbreaker. Uh, and I think he looks fantastic. He looks great. He's given off God vibes. And he makes the cape work. Uh, so there he is. So I love the narration that he goes from dad bod. So there he goes. <laughs> to God bod. Oh, I think that's really well done. Well done with the rhyming there and the, uh, you know, the... But that's just great, Taika Waititi. Uh, so anyway, he, there he is with the Milano working out. That's great. I think I love a good montage. Montage man, one of my favorite jokes ever from Robot Chicken. I think of it every time I see a montage. So here I think that this is, I don't know if this is an invasion or just a good time in New Asgard, but I believe all the Asgardians seem to be fighting off what I would maybe think was the uh, the brood from X-Men, right? I mean, I guess Marvel has the rights to those again, but some kind of aliens. So they're like, and he was reunited, or he reclaimed the mantle, and he sees Mjolnir, and he reaches out, he almost touches him, and Mjolnir's like, nope, see ya. And the narration goes, the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too fast, is what Taika Waititi says. Now look at this. So he's like, Jane? Because it's clearly Jane. She's not even wearing a helmet the next shot. But is he wearing a helmet? That looks like a weird CGI helmet to me. And I wonder if any of them are wearing helmets or if they're all just placed in with CGI so they can retract, you know, a little bit like the Ant-Man and Wasp helmets. Uh, and also so that they never have helmet hair because they're never actually wearing helmets. But I'd be like, we have to, how much is that going to cost? And I guess it's just a, just, a, just a mere quibble compared to the rest of the budget. But I mean, I don't know. It doesn't even look real to me. Maybe it's real. Maybe it's the fakest looking real helmet I've ever seen. But it doesn't, it does not look, I would be like, take that off. I don't like that helmet. <laughs> and so see, see, she's not wearing one. And I like this burning house between the two of them. Like what a, uh, and this seems to be, uh, he seems to be dressed a little bit differently here. I'm not sure why he seems to be wearing two different outfits. It seems to be the same sequence. He almost looks like he has fishnet. That's fa fabulous. I love it. Uh, but yeah, that's like the burning passion and the awkwardness between them. I, so I think that's really funny. All right, so look at that Marvel Studios. Oh, that's so well done. They really have a great theme for this. So I think, is that Jane? I guess she and Valkyrie share the same Pegasus. Or all the Valkyries had a, a winged horse. So perhaps there's a lot of them to go around. 
All right, so anyway, he's like the old ex-girlfriend. And that's Taika Waititi said that that was the take that he wanted to do on Jane Foster as Mighty Thor. The idea that, you know, she, ha- she hasn't been around since the, la- the second movie. And Taika Waititi didn't want it to be that she was just waiting on Earth and feeling bad that Thor left, that she went on and lived her life. Although, she lived her life by becoming Thor. So I think they're going to have to explore that a little bit. I'd be like, Thor, don't feel too bad about it. She's clearly still thinking about you because she's dressed as you. All right. So, I mean, how weird that would that be if you hadn't seen your ex in so long and then they showed up at your workplace uh, single white femaleing you or uh, all about even you. That's hilarious, actually, come to think of it. All right. So I think the VFX on that are pretty cool. She, she, does, she does the superhero landing. The hair looks good there, too. Lightning. Light, they have the lightning effects down. And her wig looks excellent there. That's the best shot it is. She's like, how long has it been? And it, he rem- she only thinks it's been a few years. And he remembers that it's been eight years. And he remembers it down to the day. I'd be, I mean, Chris Hemsworth's very charming. But I'd be like, keep it together, Thor. You know, don't let her, don't let her know. Don't give it away that, you know, that you're still into her. I mean, some of you think that he isn't. I don't know. He's giving major vibes like that to me. All right. So here they are in Olympus. And uh, even, even... Even Valkyrie's picking up on it. Tessa Thompson does it very well, you know. I'm excited to see who her love interest is here. I don't want her just to be Thor's wing woman. He's like, am I, am I, she's like, am I detecting feelings? And we're all detecting the feelings. Are they going to Titanic it up? Are they going to Jack and Rose it on the edge of that ship? (laughs) Although the way they do this kind of comedy, uh, Thor would totally be Rose. So he's like, no, I think this is from obviously a different scene. Now, is that like Gore's world? You know, interestingly, there's another storyline in the recent Thor comics about like this, this darkness uh, which Thor has to fight. Now, is that, you know, you might think, how does he fight a cloud? It was actually done pretty well. Uh, check out the new recent beginning of the run on the comic, again, under when Donny Cates took it over. But you can see devoid of color. Although, I wonder what this image is, because there's color here. But yeah, I mean, look at the hand acting there. Ah, uh, love the manicure, Gore grabbing uh, this sword. Uh, it's, it's like a necro sword but I, in the comic, but I think they probably felt that was too similar to what they gave Hela. There he is. He looks like he's in a music video. And some of you think he looks like Marilyn, Man- Marilyn Manson, and, and I can see that. But what he really looks like is Christian Bale. And I think that's okay. I like Christian Bale, Christian Bale. You know, it's interesting to me that he played Batman, of course, for, well, two very successful movies, and one that a number of you like and did pave the way for those other two movies. But anyway, up until Robert Pattinson came along uh, and you know blurred the line between Batman and his rogues gallery in a very compelling way. Uh, and I, to be fair, Ben Affleck did a lot of good stuff with the Bruce Wayne role. But Batman has been pretty thankless compared to the role of the rogues gallery, even in the Christian Bale movies. I mean, people mostly made fun of his voice, <laughs> his Batman voice, which was very funny. So now it's funny to see him get to play the villain and really, I think, do an extraordinary job. Uh, He's also an Oscar winning actor, and I'm very curious to see what he does with this. I mean, uh, he and Taika Waititi are already making some very interesting choices besides the visuals with this whole black and white versus color thing. But you'll notice that this gore has um, he's like a a simple man, uh, a a, a, um, like a, a, a lower class individual because, you know, he speaks with, you'll notice, his, he has poor grammar. So he says the only ones that gods care about is themselves. And I think that that is to show, you know, kind of like, you know, where he is in the scheme of things. And, you know, historically, people who have been doing, the, you know, not as well financially have been the most religious interestingly enough. So I think there's some really cool commentary going on here if you if, if you look for it. And this is just the trailer. You know, Taika Waititi might make it a little bit more clear in the film itself. Uh, so, so yeah, so very cool stuff. Now, as for the markings, some of you think it's a, he's doing a Victor Zaz, but I'm not so sure. It might be a combination because I think if you look in this, this origin photo, again, that we're going to, you know, still that you're going to see a little bit later in this trailer, you can see that he's actually getting rid of markings. You know, it's like his form of tattoo removal. And I I would gather that those are religious tattoos, religious markings. So as I said, maybe it's both. Maybe he is keeping score. And as he does, he gets rid of, you know, the the religious symbols that he he put on his body. So, I mean, again, there's a lot of good stuff here. There's a lot of good stuff here. And he still has some color in his eyes, which I guess is maybe that he still has a soul in there somewhere. 
That's fascinating too. Oh, I love that. This stuff's just all great. And look, he seems to have like his, his black blood still spattered on his robes from, do, from cutting himself and from, the, uh, you know, from when the wounds are still fresh. I mean, I think this is great stuff. He's, he, he's really worked out too, by the way. He's like, we all hit the gym, thank you. So he says he has a vow to kill all the gods. And there he is, there's his origin story. But he, boy, he really looks like, he, he does, I don't even believe that's his skin color. I believe that it's, you know, he's, he's painted white. Uh, so I, he does not seem particularly alien to me whatsoever. He said, all gods will die. And I think Thor is like, not only feeling bad for that god, but he's a god too. He's like, uh-oh. All right, so they're taking off. I love the music that they use here and the rainbow bridge. I mean, it does seem a lot like a, a fun cartoon, but like, but updated, but updated for adults, which I think is fantastic. I love that. Like you can still watch it. It's not like the Star, uh, Star Wars prequels. Sorry, which seem like you're still watching something for kids. This is this beautifully, you know, it's a little bit like the recent Chippendale Rescue Rangers. It has child elements, kid elements, but it's clearly made for adults. So it seems like he's making flirty small talk with her here, saying she had some impressive moves back there, and she does have some impressive moves. Uh, although, look, this is interesting. So they're Olympus. I think this is after the whole robe gag at the end of the trailer. So they, they decide to help him out because you can see, look, he's covered himself up again. I wonder what those markings are on his back. That's interesting. Has he already run into gore or is that something else? But look, Mjolnir can break apart into lots of little mini Mjolnirs and they come back, right? It's a little bit like Mando's weapon. That's interesting to me. And she's just carrying around a... A stick. All right. So she's like, now I don't, I don't love this line. She says, she's like, oh, it's my first bad guy. And I don't like it because not only is the line, but the delivery is so Kate Bishop and so Ms. Marvel. They sent out the screeners for that, by the way. I watched the first two episodes today and I can talk about it on Wednesday. Uh, a little bit. The social media embargo lifts that. But anyway, you know, look at, the, look at, uh, look at Valkyrie and uh, Taika Waititi's character hanging back there. So funny. There's a pretty darn good Thor Easter egg, actually, in Ms. Marvel, which I thought was really genius. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I like them hanging back, being like, okay, let's see what's happening here. Let's give them some space. But they don't look like I think something's developing. So there's Christian Bale. He's like, acting. <laughs> That's great. Something with the, with the I think, I don't, is he torturing a god there? Or is that his sword? I'm not sure. I think he's torturing a god. Uh, but there he's using his sword. And, he, and he's like, you always remember your first. And I think he's talking about her. Surely not his first girlfriend or first, uh, first just doubt. I mean, were they ever officially going out? But, um, you know, certainly his first, I think, uh, well, even his first, first woman he knew on Midgard, maybe the first relationship he kind of maybe took a little bit seriously. Uh, I'd be curious to know what first she was. I would want some clarification on that if I were her. Because he's been around for centuries. All right, so in, at least in the comics. In God, and so there's Zeus. Now, I love that shot. Oh, look at that. So that's the black and white world of gore, but look how he comes to life when he uses his power. Even his costume has some color. That's some Pleasantville stuff right there. Gary Ross is like, what the hell? All right, so anyway, in Gods We Trust. So look at Valkyrie. She's given as good as she gets too. She's using one of Zeus's thunderbolts. That's awesome. Oh, I love it. So crash the party. There he is. This is us. They're doing some fights. And so look, see, and there's uh, Gore, and it looks like he and, he and Thor have gone a couple of rounds. Uh, no, he's not looking too good. Let's see, some of you have already said this, but it's like we always talk about, is this villain gonna make it out of the project alive? Because MCU never lets their villains live for more than one project, it's so stupid. Uh, all right, so he's like, you're different than any of the other gods I've killed. We have a couple, we have a nice little shot there of uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy just for a little bit of flavor. But then he says, cause I have something worth fighting for. And I mean, some of you think maybe they're just pals. I don't know, I've never seen any pals do a pinky caresses. <laughs> if your pal does a pinky caress to you, your pal likes you. All right, I love this. He's like, you, and I was like, bring it. Oh, it's so great. And we have another lightning shot. And some of you have pointed out that looks like maybe the watcher there. And then that looks like maybe the god, the goddess Death, who actually, of course, in the comics had a fling with, uh, well, more than a fling. That was a, speaking of serious relationships with Thanos. And then you have the Thor Love and Thunder logo, which looks like intentionally low res, which I think is hilarious. 
And then this is fabulous. So Zeus, and so you can see they have these weird tie-dye robes that they're wearing. They're supposed to be in disguise in Olympus for some reason. So he that looks straight out of Aquaman, by the way. Uh, but anyway, uh, Zeus is like, let me see this disguise. I'll strip it away. And he's doing this crazy Greek accent, which I kind of am digging because he's so committed to it. And he's like... Uh, and he fl- he's like, I will flick it away. And he, he's, he's totally, you know, shirtless. We've seen that before, but now he's got nothing on. And I, I know some of you pointed out that was only the next, that was the natural progression of the MCU classic shirtless shot at this point. So he's totally nude. And uh, his friends are quite surprised. And he's like, you flick too hard. And the delivery there is phenomenal. But then this is a great gag. Everybody, the men and the women, uh, just totally faint at the sight of his, uh, you know, what he's working with. <laughs> I think it's great. And they're like, should we help him? Jane's like, should we help him? Uh, and this is clearly the shot that we saw. So they are, I guess after they fight, they sit back down because we've seen them in these exact same chairs, uh, you know, dressed, uh, just, you know, revealed as to who they are. She's like, should we help him? Like, and she's enjoying the show. And she's like, we'll help him. We'll help him in a minute. And so the, I guess they, in, uh, in Olympus, Zeus has grapes instead of popcorn. Grab your grapes. And then we have this nice shot, I think, from earlier with him fighting some aliens. But that's a beautiful shot of Thor. That's gorgeous. He is a space, he's a space Viking. I'll give him that. Not, no false advertising here. What do you think? What do you think of the trailer, especially with that extra commentary that I've added? Does it change how you feel about it? I liked it. I liked it before, but now I'm really, really excited. And check out those Thor comics, by the way. They're great reads, and they're available on Comixology. Some of them for free if you're a member of Comixology. Well, not for free, but at no extra cost if you're a member of Comixology Unlimited. Basically, their version of a streaming service. Uh, But they're great. Jason Aaron, now Donny Cates is run. You can't go wrong with that. And Kieran Gillen's Journey into Mystery, this is some of the best Marvel comics that have come out you know, in, in, in years. All right, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.